What's up guys? Johnny here. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, so today I want to talk to you about some of the issues I have with my Realac X210 builds. Um, I've been flying that thing for a bit. I love flying it. Um, you don't see it as much in this channel yet just because I don't have a way to mount a GoPro to it. So I don't really have HD footage, but it's been flying great for me. Um, I took it out for my first time flying through a racetrack. Um, it was a real simple track, but I had never flown through gates before. I was flying this almost entirely the whole day. It just worked great. I had a lot of fun. I was keeping up with everyone else. It just flew awesome. Um, but not everything has been perfect with this build. Um, there's really two issues I've had, and I don't doubt that some of you guys out there who've tried the same build have probably run into the exact same problem I have. Um, so first and foremost, I had a little bit of an issue with the power. Um, now, I was able to do the build and do my maiden flight, and everything seemed to work fine. However, I noticed soon after that when I went to fly it again a little bit later, it seemed to just turn itself off and reboot. One time I was doing a little bit of a hover test and it actually fell out of the sky and rebooted on me. Um, so I was trying to figure out what that could be and how did it work the first time, not work the second time. And so what I think it ended up being is that the five volt regulator that's built into the Revo that comes with it is really not that good. Um, you can power the flight controller with it, but if you try to power anything else, it just might overheat. So I think that's why it actually worked pretty well on the maiden flight. As it was flying through the air, you know, it was actually cooling off the, the voltage regulator and that's how I was able to power both my flight controller and my receiver. Those are the only two things I was running on the five volts. So after doing some testing, you know, I'd turn it on, I'd wait, it would reboot itself. Um, I try to fly, it reboot itself. So to resolve this issue, I wound up connecting the five volt output of the PDB to the five volt rail on the flight controller. So now the five volts was being powered both by the voltage regulator on the flight controller and the voltage regulator on the PDB. Once I made that change, I didn't have any more power issues. So that's really something to watch out for. If you have the Revo F4 flight controller, definitely be aware that if you're, if you're trying to power anything except for just the flight controller on that five volt rail, you're probably gonna run into some issues. Um, so I definitely recommend do what I did, connect the five volt output to the five volt rail of the flight controller and your issue should go away as long as you know you have a decent uh, PDB. Secondarily, because this is a F4 flight controller, what I've learned is that the, the FrySky uh, telemetry doesn't actually work by default on the F4 board. And after doing a little bit of research, what I found out was that the F3 boards have built in telemetry, er, so after doing a little bit of research, what I learned is that the F3 boards actually have built-in inverters for that signal, so that they can invert the signal to the way that the receiver is expecting. However, with the F4 board, I guess the F4 chip was actually built before the F3 chip, and therefore it doesn't include that inverter. So what's actually been going on for me is I've not been using telemetry as I've done this flying. Um, instead, I've been relying on the OSD that's built into the Runcam Swift 2. Now that's been working great for me. I have a good you know, idea of how much battery is left. I can watch my voltage, I can land when it's in time. So it hasn't really caused an issue, but I like to have telemetry. I want my telemetry back. So today what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you the way that I soldered on the five volt regulator. And I'm also gonna try to fix the issue with the telemetry support. Um, so in my reading, what I've learned is that there's actually an inverter built into the XSR receiver that I'm using for this build. And then if I take the wire for telemetry, or the smart port wire, and put it after the inverter, I'm basically inverting the inverted signal, and at that point, I'm getting the signal that the XSR expects, and therefore I should get telemetry back. And if you're flying an F4 board and run into these issues, hopefully this guide helps you too. I know it's possible with the X4 RSB, and it's also possible with the XSR. Today we're gonna to do the XSR, and I'll include a link below uh, to where I found the information for how to do this. So I'm following the XSR, but if you have an X4R SB, if this works, doing following that guy there should also work for you. So let's break it open, let's break it down, let's get it done. All right guys, so first let's, uh, let's take off these props, make sure they don't spin up on us. Uh, let's keep everything safe. So first we're just firing it up and making sure that we can connect to it, but that we don't see any telemetry. Um, and then we're gonna try to solder on the wire like I talked about and see if we can resolve the issue with telemetry. Um, so if I go here, if I go to my telemetry screen, um, you can see that I have an RSSI feed um, and that's because that's built into the uh, receiver itself. It doesn't actually require the input from the flight controller, um, but you see that I don't see any voltage. So even if I arm it, 
there's still no voltage. So telemetry is not working. Um, let's get this thing opened up and try it out. So if you take a look right here, this is a Matek XT60 PDB that actually came with this um, Realac X210. And you can check out right here, there's actually a built-in 5 volt regulator. Um, so if we follow this power lead right here, and we bring it all the way up to the board, you'll see that I've wired it in, in line with where the ESCs get plugged in. So that entire rail down the middle of the ESC wires, that's actually a 5 volt input, right? Because if we're running uh, five volt BECs on our ESCs, that's where it'd plug in. And so that's a five volt rail for the entire ESC. So therefore by plugging in the one from the PDB into that five volt rail, we're supplementing the five volt power that's on the built in regulator with the regulator of the PDB. And like I said, that solved all my power issues. So if you're trying to you know, plug something in here like I am with my receiver, where it's plugged into the five volt rail, make sure you have supplemental power that can also power it. Um, alternatively, what I could have done is actually power my receiver from the 5 volt to the PDB directly, and that would have also alleviated the issue. However, I, fig I figured it was a better idea to plug it into the power in case later I add another device that also needs 5 volts. It'll just be simpler if I'm already supplementing the power. This is actually the connector that I currently plug directly into my um, XSR receiver. And one thing that I'm not actually looking forward to is that right now to connect and disconnect my receiver, all I had to do is unplug and replug this in. However, with the change we're about to make, what's actually going to happen is I'm going to need to directly so uh, solder this wire here for the smart port directly to um, the XSR receiver. And so what that means is that I'll no longer be able to simply use this connector but instead it'll be permanently connected to this flight controller. Um, so that probably is just going to impact the way that I mount it onto the copter versus right now I have it basically mounted to this top piece and you know I would like being able to pull that off so I'll probably find a different way to mount it. So something else I do is I do and I think lots and lots of people do this but I actually use zip ties to keep the antennas upright and so I've done that here but that also means it's hard to get this uh, receiver off. So what I'm going to have to do here is basically cut the zip ties and get this thing out. All right, so now we have the uh, receiver here uh, separate out from the copter. Now we've got to cut off the um, shrink wrap so we can actually get to the point where we have to solder on the connector. So the other thing I just noticed is that this XSR has actually lifted the pad for one of the um, antennas. That's not good. I wonder if I can actually use the pad next to it as a ground. All right, that was a little bit of unexpected surgery we had to do. So what I'm gonna do now is actually plug this back into the copter, make sure I didn't just break this, make sure we still have signal. Um, so we know that if I do break something later, um, it at least wasn't this step. So let's try it out real quick. All right, so that's a good sign. We're all green on here. That means we're connected, right? If I turn off my receiver here, it should go red. All right, transmitter's off. It lost connection. Uh, XSR is still good. All right, so I've taken a look at the directions, and what it's telling me is that this pin right here is actually after the inverter. So what I got to do is I got to take the smart port wire and actually put it to that pin right there. All right, let's, uh, let's break her out and let's solder her up. All right, so this middle yellow is the one I need. So let's uh, pry this off. There we go. Probably should change out the tip here. This is a real fine point, but I just don't feel like it. Uh, 
All right. Supposedly that's the right spot. Um, that's the one it shows in the directions. Shows right there at the end of that um, there. And uh, let's plug her in. First, let's make sure we still connect. All right, it's on the under under side here. Let's see. So if we take a look, it is green, which means we are connected to the transmitter. So now the moment of truth, let's check telemetry. Go here, arm it. Nothing. Well, that sucks. At least we know it arms, at least we know it still works, but uh, telemetry is not yet working. So uh, let's keep investigating and see why not. All right, guys, so good news. I went and checked this out on the computer, and what I found out is I actually didn't have the VBAT monitoring turned on on the flight controller. And without the VBAT monitoring on the flight controller, there's no way to send battery voltage, which is what we were looking for on telemetry. Um, so I went into beta flight, I enabled VBAT, I rebooted, um, and that should actually solve our problem. I think everything was uh, soldered correctly. So now let's try this test again. So I'm gonna switch over here and take a look at the uh, telemetry screen I have set up, which is showing RSSI and um, voltage per cell. So now if I fire this up, um, we can see that we have a green uh, on here where we've connected and you can see we now have telemetry. So this battery was not a brand new battery. This was a used battery and that's why the voltage is at 385. Um, but everything's working. We're getting telemetry on our Revo. Uh, that simple mod solved our problem. We are now good to go. All right, guys, so there we have it. Now that we got this thing back together, we got everything started up, we got our telemetry working, um, power's good, we got our LEDs all set up. Um, let's just go take this thing outside, plug one battery through it, make sure we didn't break anything in the process, and uh, we should be good to go. All fixed up, X210, good to go. So if you have an F4 based uh, flight controller and you're trying to use your uh, Fry Sky receiver with telemetry, um, follow this, follow the guide I have in the description. Hopefully, you too can get it working. And uh, I'm about to have a whole lot more fun now. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch y'all next time. Peace!